Now I kind of feel like it's the first day of class and everybody's spread out. They don't want to be too close to the teacher. They might get called on, but I can still see your faces. I'm going to call on you. So thank you for coming. Uh, and welcome to those that are watching on the live stream. This is really a special time of year. It's an opportunity for us to get together at the end of a very, very, very successful season to celebrate that and also get a sneak peek at the up upcoming season. So let's applaud what we've already done this year. So <laughs> this is also the quote unquote official time for the trustees to report to you, our membership, on the health of the Playhouse. Uh, as you know, we continue to grow. And we've recovered very well, we think, from the pandemic. The shows this past season were all stellar. And we appreciate and thank all of you that were involved in the production, behind the scenes, on the stage, and supporting the shows by coming to them. What I'd like to do is just spend a minute or two and introduce the Board of Trustees. I think everybody knows most of the ones that will be here tonight. Obviously, I'm Paul Jarbo. I'm currently the president of the board. With us tonight, I know Kerr Anderson is here. Kerr, can you stand? And give a <laughs>
PhD. It's now a great <laughs> Based upon the battle I saw, I'm looking, there's just going to be a huge upset this year. And <laughs> Rice is running again, and that's every, she just cleared the field. So, good so thank you for the service that all of you give. This is all volunteer work, folks. Everybody that's on the uh, Board of Trustees are volunteers. They give it their time, they give it their talents and their expertise, and it really makes uh, the Playhouse, help makes the Playhouse what it is. <clears throat> now, also, I'd like to give a thank you to those who have served on committees this year, the volunteers, those who have stepped up also to uh, put their name in for the election for the Artistic Committee this year. So thank you to those folks. <laughs> we talked about last week the gala and uh, the, uh, the, the encore presentation. Oh, wasn't that just amazing, the, present, uh, the show at the gala? <laughs> still coming in from financial, the financial side of this, um, but, uh, but it looks like it's going to be a huge success, financial success, to help kick off our next season. Um, before I move into the first order of business, I see my first director ever that I was going to show here, Debbie Hershey is here. So, <laughs> Debbie, I, I still do what you taught me, which is when I'm in court, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, I just turn to someone and I say, lie. <laughs> I do appreciate it. I've gotten sanctioned several times. <laughs> Before I leave the stage, there is one piece of business I'd like to do. We do have the minutes from last year's annual meeting. Part of our rule is that we have to approve those, and so we're going to do that by the vote of membership. Uh, those were available, those minutes. I'm sure all of you have carefully read them, carefully read those minutes fascinating minutes from last year. But we are going to ask for a motion tonight to approve the 2022 annual board meeting minutes. So if I have a motion and identify who you are for the... Identify yourself, please. But I can't see very well out here. Anytime nothing, I, I move we approve the minutes from last year. Okay, I heard that. Can I have a second? A second, Sheree and Anne. Okay, so we've got that. And all in favor of approval of the minutes? Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? I can't imagine. So with that, um, I'm now going to turn the podium over to Karen, uh, who will conduct the elections. And before I do that, because I'll be done for my share, just a big thank you to everybody. Uh, this was a challenging year. I mean, we've come off some really tough times with COVID and with some um, internal uh, changes in terms of our organization and financially and with the shows. But I just got to tell you, uh, from my seat, we hit it out of the park this year. Everybody involved did a great job, and I'm just really excited about the Slate Show for next year. So thank you. Karen.
the light. And um, tell us a little bit about yourself. State your name. Pardon me. You want me to find my light? But um, tell us a little bit about yourself, state your name, and a few things about your experience, uh, background, and why you're a good candidate for the Board of Trustees. And after you've spoken, <laughs> I'll open it up for questions, if there are any. Uh, well, I walked in the doors here in 1977. So I've been here quite a while. And not quite as active as in the late 90s, but then I back and uh, when we were going through our um, shutting, shut down for the fire marshal and came back in at that point um, and since then I've been doing a lot with the finances. Um, that, my background is in public finance. Uh, but when I first was here I was active doing a little bit of everything. I started out in props. I was on the, what back then we were, we had a, a board, which is an artistic board rather than just a committee. So I was in charge of props for a few years on that board. I got elected on the board. Um, I have also produced, uh, assistant stage managed, run um, some of the lights. Never done sound, Gary. Never done sound. <laughs> um, so in, in, since uh, 1999, since we went to gala, I've worked on every single gala. So that's, this will be the 24th gala this year. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think I'm, proudest and helping with the young company because when I first got here there was a separate company called the Traverse City Children's Theater and they were a nonprofit um, and helped they, they wanted to come in and, and use our facility so eventually we put a committee together and I I helped bring that nonprofit into this nonprofit along with Phil and a couple other people um, so that we're all one group and I think I'm pretty I mean, that touches my heart more than anything, is, the, is having worked with the uh, Children's Theater for, since 1999. Um, and then during COVID, I worked pretty hard. We were shut down. I was in the building, the only one in the building, trying to find as much money as we could um, to keep ourselves solvent since we pulled in about $550,000. Um, and we still haven't totally gotten uh, right off from um, a final okay from the Small Business Administration that I'm sure that that's going to finally, I mean, they're so small. <laughs> uh, getting our uh, SVOD, which is the Save Our Savings Grant. Um, and so, um, I appreciate your support again. I still, this is a home for me, and I still feel um, so much gratitude and joy when I uh, work here. And so, um, I appreciate your vote tonight.
I would like to ask each one of you then to speak uh, about yourself individually. I'll ask Terry to go first, and then Joe, and then Alan. Or Aaron, excuse me. <laughs> Aaron. So please state your name and say a few things about your experience, background, and why you think you're a good candidate for the Artistic Committee. Thank you. Uh, I'm Terry Heffern. I uh, started here in 1985, and then I went away. Um, but I have been doing theater for 41 years. Um, mostly on stage, directing, uh, some backstage, but I don't have the patience for it. Um, I have, I've, been, I've just finished my first term on the Artistic Committee and we have done a lot of cool things um, in trying to grow professionally as the theater becomes more successful. We have in implemented some programs from the professional theater world, like the Cast Deputy Program, uh, which I, I find we've, has helped solve some problems. It's a, it's a buffer when we need a buffer. Uh, we continue to develop the Artistic Committee Liaison Position, which is a, another route of communication between the production and the administration and the problem solving. Um, I am very interested in pursuing um, intimacy coaching because as the world changes, I, I think it's super important that for shows with sensitive material or physical contact that we really need an intimacy coach. And it's something that Leslie and I have talked about and, and I know you've been working on it. And I'd like to continue working on that. Um, I, I think we selected a great season last year. I think we've selected a great season for the next year. And I would just like another three years to keep moving forward with what we've been doing. So thank you. shows uh, here, but I started in 1968 in Dan Yankees in high school. Uh, did seven shows for a, an English teacher who happened to own his own production company and produced uh, professionally throughout the D.C. area. Uh, so we did it right, and the Washington Post critic agreed that we were the equal of any college in uh, D.C. Uh, then I moved on to Yale and learned a whole lot of theater at Yale, including seeing Meryl Streep's first performance as an actress in the Yale School of Drama. She was a frog in the Yale swimming pool in Aristophanes the Frogs. <laughs> and then I got, uh, the Yale Dramat decided to quit competing with the Yale Repertory Theater and actually do a musical again, uh, returning to its Cole Porter roots. So we did Little Mary Sunshine. And I got cast as Captain Jim. And then the year after that, um, the estate of Cole Porter decided to spring for big bucks and do Anything Goes on the anniversary of his death. And that was a massive production with the uh, Yale School of Drama, Cole Porter Estate, and the undergraduate Yale Dramat. And the New York Times critic said that could have been moved to Broadway as is, and then it hit. Um, people got their degrees in set design uh, for designing the set. Uh, then uh, went to law school. We started spoofing the faculty in a libel show every year. And then uh, in the County Bar Association, we launched an annual um, review uh, where we did song parodies for years and years and years. Um, then I was a trial lawyer, which is otherwise known as a song and dance man. Uh, and then uh, uh, moved on to corporate healthcare law until winding up here. And uh, I think I would, and now that I'm retired, I have the time to do absolutely nothing but as good a job as I can uh, trying to find the right shows and uh, the right directors, uh, et cetera, and would love to do it. My name is Aaron Weinman. Uh, I graduated from Central Michigan in 2011 where I received my degree uh, in theater and interpretation. 
Part of that degree uh, included uh, reading text, uh, play text, and interpreting and talking about themes and uh, writers' messages. Uh, I got a focus in uh, a generalist focus, uh, so I took part in advanced stage makeup, playwriting, advanced directing, advanced acting um, for my degree. Uh, I've been actively studying theater since I was 13, 12, 13 years old when I started taking classes in junior high. Uh, five years before COVID, I lived in New York City. Sorry, I lived in New York City for five and a half years before COVID. Uh, I worked for a uh, promotions company out in TK, uh, the TKTS booth out in Times Square. We specifically promoted Broadway and off-Broadway shows. Um, so if any of you have been to the TKTS booth in Times Square and those annoying people who try and hand you pieces of paper about shows, that was me. <laughs> uh, the opportunity to see some of the best uh, professional theater that is available in this country was a, a huge eye-opening thing uh, and something that I would like to bring to the artistic committee um, the shows that I was able to see and the themes and the messages that they speak to. Uh, I would like to give our community the opportunity to see those shows as well and to be a part of those conversations. So thank you very much.
directors, interviewing the directors. We've done a lot of work this year, and so I'm glad Terry brought up some of that we've done the last couple of years with some of the new pieces. Um, we, with the help of the staff and with the tech chairs, um, really revamped the production manual. And if you haven't read it all, I really encourage you to. Um, and really have just worked to bring work to bring back the director and post show interviews with directors to try and give that feedback and um, really again use this experience as a learning experience. I've been so excited to see a lot of new directors um, coming coming in and then coming back again. Um, and so it's just been really uh, a great, a very difficult, hard three years. Let me tell you, but really, really amazing, and, and I really appreciate. That. Every moment of it, even even the tough moments. Um, so now I want to make sure that we introduce next season and our directors next season as well. Leslie, before you go oh, on, yeah. you question, who is the third member of the committee who is leaving the committee? And if you're leaving, Terry's yeah. running again. Yeah, Matt Archibald, who is who has served for two. Oh, okay. Thank you. Email if you haven't seen it and you're interested. 
and um, you will then be notified um, sometime in August, for potentially to be to have be interviewed by the artistic committee in September. So that's the kind of timeline for that particular one. Um, I think that's all that I have to say. Yeah. Um, again, just thank you so much to my committee members. Thank you to all of our directors coming up for, and to everybody actually who applied to direct, because I know it's a big thing. So really huge thank you to everybody to, who applied to direct. We really value your, your time and your energy in putting that together. And we're just really excited for a great season. And I will, oh, I will be here. Um, I will also say, and I see your hand too, Terry. Um, I will say that, um, as Terry mentioned, the intimacy um, coach. I don't have a, a ton of training, but I've taken a little bit, and I'm planning to do more. So please do let me know. That's a, that's a role that I would love to help um, volunteer and be a part of for Old Town Playhouse, even as I step off the artistic committee. Terry. Yes, Leslie, um, I just want to reiterate something that's gone out, that we are looking for people to come in to work on productions as assistants. Oh, thank you. Um, so if you've ever wanted to think about stage managing or directing, please, or, or conducting, or vocal directing, please, please, please contact us because we, we need to bring new people in, we need to train new people so it's not the same faces all the time. So let us know if you want to do props, costumes, let us know, that's all they need. Yes, they know that is really important. Thank you, Terry. I should have said that. So yes, we are actually looking to try, and we, all the directors that came on, we talked to them about this as well. So even though some of them may have set, you know, or had crew and they talked to their crew, they're actually very open to getting new people um, involved. So please, please, please let us know if you don't know that director or you need to go, you know, you need help. Let us know, um, somebody from the artistic committee. Let it, um, also, you can talk to tech chairs if that's your area, of the, in the area you're interested in to get more info. Um, please, please reach out. Um, yes. I just want to say we also have this little group that meets downstairs twice a month called Age to Perfection. Oh, if you're 55 or older and you are no longer thinking you're secure in memorizing and blocking and that sort of thing, come and see us. We read theater and we have a great time and we get real dramatic sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had nightmares about the last show we did. <laughs>
for many people is kind of under the radar. If you're, not, if you're not involved in the kids' programs, maybe you don't know all of what is going on at Young Company. Um, but it is, it is just fantastic. The kids use every inch of this building. They rehearse in the ladies' room, and the, the uh, Board of Trustees had to wait one evening to start their meeting because there was a tech class in the conference room. So it's quite amazing. So Mel, please come tell us about Young Company. <laughs>
I was in spring break camp and so I got a tour of the stage and I know that the set all falls down, but don't tell them. And she's pointing at her parents who were <laughs> like So it's just great um, to have the interaction too with the young kids all the way uh, through our, our, our programming. So Margaret Neal started talking about Age for Perfection, uh, but I do want to give a shout out to them. It is a very loyal, participating group. Um, they meet on a regular basis here. They uh, not only meet on every uh, two Saturdays a month for their regular Age Perfection Readers Theater, they have added on improv on Fridays, I think twice a month maybe. Um, so that group is expanding, always challenging themselves in their skills and what they can do. They are also truly an outreach arm of the Playhouse that they will go anywhere that will have them to perform. And a really fun thing happened this spring. I uh, met the woman who was coordinating the U of M Road Scholars Program, and she was going to do a circuit through northern Michigan. And I said, hey, how about the Playhouse as a stop? And so through some conversation, we coordinated that uh, Age to Perfection would perform for them um, over the dinner hour, and we did it at the event center, and they loved every bit of it. They loved the interaction at dinner, talking to the groups from Age to Perfection. They loved the performances, and uh, Dana, the director, wrote to me and said that on the bus home, she was going up and down the aisle asking what was your favorite stop on the, on the tour, and we were it with Age to Perfection, so thank you to Age to Perfection. <laughs> and just so you know, I'm always recruiting for you at Encore. There was a new lady to the Playhouse that just moved to Traverse City, and she is interested in Age to Perfection. <laughs> she came on Saturday, there you go. Okay, now we're going to uh, get into some of the nitty-gritty parts that we uh, have to do for annual meeting and uh, we'll probably go through this um, real quickly here. Um, this chart just shows you income versus expenses and how it breaks. Uh, it, it's very difficult to get this kind of information um, to show well on the screen, but just a couple of things that I want to point out is if you look on the income side, which is the, the first pie chart, um, how important donations, events, and grants are. I mean, those three things make up 52% of our income. So it's a very important part of what we do. It really fuels the organization. Um, so when we put a lot of emphasis into things like GALA um, and grants, that's why. It's a very important part of our income. The other uh, pie chart is the expense side. and. There's a section, a big orange section that you know, a lot of people look at as overhead there. Um, but within that, I just want to point out things you don't think about. Our accounting fees, legal fees, our cloud hosting of our ticketing system and insurance, just those things are 38% of that section of the pie. So there's a lot of things, you know, show business is business, and there's a lot of things that go into it that we don't always think about. Um, thanks to having two galas in one season, um, this season looks like it will be a break-even season. Uh, we, we weren't sure when we went into it whether we'd have to dip into some of our savings or not, um, but it is going to be about a break-even season, so we're very happy about that as well. The balance sheet that we are uh, legally bound to present to you and the good news here as Peg talked about thanks to the, the um, pandemic funding that became available and some very diligent work um, we have a, excuse me we have a nice reserve uh, so we're in good shape there um, and that helps in situations as for an example this past season we had stellar shows, the performances were wonderful, but our ticket sales on main stage were actually 15% lower than the season before. And it's primarily because the season before, if you recall, we had Chicago and Cinderella, so you had those big name shows, and you know, there's only so many of those. So we had a very good season, um, but, but uh, having that little bit of reserve allowed us to do some things like the Laramie Project and, and some other theater. So. We were thankful to be able to do that. 
The next slide is really detailed, and it's, I just have it up here to let you know that we watch a lot of metrics at the Playhouse, and thank you to Jim for keeping these um, pulled for us and, and top of mind. Uh, a couple things I just want to point out is that we're very happy in the, on the first, so Wizard gave me a really great a laser pointer, which I was going to use, and it fell off the chair. It doesn't work now, so I'm going to have to do this without the laser pointer that I'm so excited about. Um, but on the first chart here, uh, it shows how the different um, parts of our, our programming make up our, our overall. And it's very nice to see Studio again as a slice of the pie. We had one season this past season, yes, rock on. And this season we will have three, so that's really fun. We did have a, a pretty significant drop in subscriptions uh, that actually dropped about in half. Uh, a lot of things going on there, uh, partly the mix of the shows, but partly that's just not how our society really works anymore. People don't plan that far in advance, and um, a lot of theaters are seeing that drop in subscriptions. Uh, so this season, we are going to have something called an all-season pass, and if someone purchases that, they can get a ticket to any one of the shows, including Studio, including Young Company, and um, there's a savings to be had by having that all-season pass, so we're hoping that's really going to bump that back up again. Exciting that our new buyers, um, all our ticket buyers, we got a 61% of our ticket purchases were new buyers. <laughs> amazing that there's a little bit of cushion in there because some people forget their account, their password, and start a new one when they buy tickets. <laughs> but then we did have a lot of uh, new people, and Peg will attest to this. I mean, how many times did we have to tell people where the restrooms were or you know, what was going on? So that always, we always smile when that happens because, you know, they're brand new to the Playhouse, and that's kind of fun. Also had a lot of new volunteers this year, which is, is healthy for the organization. Um, and then on the marketing side, just something to point out here is that people coming to shows, a significant portion of them, it was because they had friends in the show or they heard about it from friends um, or they were passing by and saw it on the marquees. And so that's great. Uh, that is uh, great inexpensive marketing that really helps us get the word out about our shows. So, on the next slide, uh, I just wanted to point out some of our accomplishments this year. Um, we did receive a grant from the Michigan Arts and Culture Council to put murals, artistic murals, on the outside of the building. We do have to go before the zoning board in a couple weeks to get a variance to do that. But the grant is to celebrate all forms of art and the rich uh, heritage and culture that we have of arts here in this community. So uh, we will be once we get the variants, we will be reaching out to local artists to design those. Uh, then they will be put onto large banners to fill these cemented in windows. And they will celebrate theater, symphony, music, uh, writing, uh, painting, sculpture, all of the different art forms. And um, it, it's really exciting because you know, we are on a gateway to downtown. And um, it just would be so wonderful to have this building be uh, eye-catching, and it, it really will be transformative, so that's exciting for us. Uh, other accomplishments real quick, we did pop-up studio, we relaunched, uh, we did our first uh, annual report marketing piece that went out to the public um, this year. We did get donations off of that, so we'll be repeating that. We had the return of Gala, as Paul talked about, and we're now back on cycle with our June, our traditional June time slot, which I think we will stay with. We did open two endowments this year, one for operating and one for expansion, which we are busting at the seams. We need to expand the building somehow. Uh, we've been fine-tuning with the help of Jenna uh, in marketing. We've been fine-tuning our communications. We have the uh, spotlight that goes out to volunteers and members. And we're always looking for a volunteer to write a short little article on their, uh, to include in, in each one of those to keep the volunteers connected and keep those memories um, out there. So if you're interested in writing a story, you know, Joni's written one, Denny's written one. Um, and then we have the stage lights, which goes out to a little bit broader audience. That's the people who, uh, in addition to volunteers and members, the people who have 
expressed an interest in knowing more about the theater. So those two communications go out on a regular basis. And our marketing has really been successful. We had, um, our Facebook has about 6,000 follower, followers. Uh, Instagram, six, over 1,600. And uh, our June Facebook reach was 21,000 people. So the thing about social media, you all know, is that it only works if you engage with it, if you like it, if you share it, if you comment. So please, whether you're in a show or not, please do that because that is what make social media work, and um, we really are, really are on a good momentum with that. One of the big accomplishments this year, um, Aaron, if you could switch that, is our new website. I hope that you are enjoying that. We are using the pictures that we get from the show, so the website is very uh, colorful, and uh, we keep uh, working on it on a regular basis and changing the pictures out. Uh, so we're very proud of this. Jenna and Jim worked really hard on uh, getting this up and running. It was no small uh, task. It is a living resource, so there will always be changing, but we, we want it to be a place where you can go, where you can go find that new production manual, or you can find that form that you're, you're looking for. Um, so it, it's a, it is a living uh, resource for you, and we'll we have frequent updates to it, and continue to use our show pictures there. So go, moving on to our strategic initiatives, uh, we um, talked about the pop-up studio, we launched that, and looking for other ways, other, you know, expanding readers' theater, whatever it might be, finding new ways for our volunteers to be able to perform. <coughs> Always looking for partnerships in the community. We partnered with the Grand Traverse Pavilions and had the Mrs. Kelly's Journey Home show here. We share our space sometimes with other groups. Um, the, uh, the sustainability for the future, we do have the two new endowments this year, and our new branding, and um, going onto our Facebook page, and our website. So really doing some good work on all of these uh, different strategic goals. So are there any questions? And I think someone just handed uh, Karen the results of the voting, so if you want to kind of make your way up. In the meantime, are there any questions on the business part of Old Town Playhouse? Great! Exciting! <laughs> oh! Um, I've had some questions about why the, uh, the new logo is exactly the same as Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> it's not. It's not. If you put them side by side, it's not exactly the same. And um, an inter interesting thing, I was at a conference recently uh, for the Midwest Arts uh, Network. And if you look at many of the new logos, um, they are all colorful um, logos and all kind of fit into a nice family. So uh, it's fresh, it's what's happening out there. Um, and you can, all, you can always find some similarities, but um, it's not exactly the same as that. It's sort of like seeing the car that you just bought Everybody suddenly yeah. Got the same car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is very true. That is very true. Karen. I think I'll stay down here. Is this on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, we have voting results. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, for the board of trustees, we had one candidate, and uh, the winner is Peg Brace. Yeah. <laughs>
this is tradition that we recognize the people that we've lost this past year who have been instrumental at the Playhouse. And uh, Linda and Shar, I know, were ushers for a long time. And Luann, I think I heard, was very involved in the 80s in many different aspects behind uh, backstage. And she designed the original logo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We always want to uh, remember those people who have played an important part um, at the Playhouse. And want to thank everybody. Um, we're going to do a few special awards, but really thank all the volunteers that, that make the magic happen here. Really couldn't do without you. So, so before we get into the, the established traditional awards, um, I came up with a one that I want to do, and, and some people uh, have heard to suggest this as well. Uh, this is a, a novel award, and um, as everyone knows, the season, from a set building standpoint, was quite a whopper. <laughs> yeah. Not only did we uh, challenge to the max with play that goes wrong, we had something rotten like on the heels of it being built um, in the wing. So, the set crew, I mean, cannot say enough about the set crew. So, Kurt Anderson, I want to give you this year's brand new Whopper Award. Well, is that he 
is a good teacher and is patient with uh, training the, the young people in our theater. And um, particular story, <clears throat> um, Annie Bai had worked with him closely for a while, and when Bill had to go out of town, Annie was able to step in and run lights. And it was part of what she wrote about in her application to Interlochen Arts Academy where she's been accepted and was her mom Sarah Jane came in, she was just just glowing that how important this was and that this is something Annie has wanted. So thank you also for teaching our, our young people. Uh, the next award is the Peck Grace Award and as you know this is an award that goes to those uh, someone who really works quietly behind the scenes, but is, is so important to the theater. And uh, this particular person, uh, again, nominated by his peers, when there's been some really magical things on the stage, like a revolve, like a light up spiral staircase, um, raining on the stage during a decent, um, and I'm missing some other big thing, but when there's really impressive, magical things, that happen on the stage. Bill Hershey is usually the one driving it. So <laughs> Bill Direct 
Jesus Christ Superstar. And my first contact with Sam was through that show. She auditioned. I did not know that she was a musician at that point, uh, but she uh, auditioned and I cast her. And I have to say that she is, to this day, one of the most memorable aspects of that show to me. Sam is fierce, I have to say, and I mean that in the best, best sense of the word, fierce. Now I need my glasses because I can't read anything, that, at least not on my phone. Uh, when she was on stage, you couldn't take your eyes off her. And I'll share with you one little anecdote at that time. Uh, during the 39 lashes, it was a real challenge. We kept trying to figure out how to make it work. And at one point I said, well, everybody just stand there and, and when we hear the, the call out of the number, you know, clap. Well, it started out simple. But before long, everybody was doing it. And it made an incredible sound. And dead center in front was Sam Clark. And God, I got to tell you, it hurt to watch her do that. She would go from anger to great suffering and pain by the end of that sequence. It was an incredible thing. And that's where the fears come to my, in my thinking. Now, since then, Sam has been a part of almost every one of my orchestras for musicals I've directed. She's even music directed some. And I know Joe is going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and she started doing that for me with Sweeney Todd. I keep coming back to the word fierce because, in a sense, it, it really is the best way I can think of to describe her. Uh, as chair of music, she has been a fierce advocate for all the musicians that work at the Playhouse. <laughs> she has indeed uh, uh, led us to where we are today in that regard. And Additionally, she has been a leader of note, and she has guided the policies that affect the musicians. Even performers are touched uh, by her support, warmth, and direction. I have to admit, she helped me probably more than any other voice coach I ever had in my life. Uh, and as a performer, she made me, gave me the freedom to trust my own vocal abilities. Believe me, I'm much stronger for it today. And I appreciate everything that she has done for this theater, especially. I'm going to turn it over to Joe now. Oh, he's got another microphone. Good. I'm going to step up here. I feel more comfortable on a podium. Okay, here we go. That podium. Yes, this is all I need. Uh, okay, I've known Sam even 35, not 39 years. 30, there. 39 years. 39. <laughs> but as a conductor, I've conducted a couple of those. Uh, I've little history. In uh, 1984, uh, a man named uh, David Elliot. Elliot, thank you. <laughs> Dave Elliot saw me sitting back in the, the uh, room because I, I've been uh, conductor, uh, writing reviews for the Record Eagle for a long time. And he spotted me back there. And he weighed me down. He says, how would you like to conduct? Well, I suppose. I hadn't conducted a musical since 15 years before that. I thought, okay, why, why not? So 
first thing he said was, you'll need a flute player. And so he said, uh, I know somebody named Ann Clark, who is really a good flute player. And she works at the Park Place Hotel. So first thing I did was to drive down to Park Place. Okay. And uh, I walked up to the counter, and there was Sam. And it's been like that ever since. Sam became my first musician on stage in South Pacific. What an incredible opportunity. And I've, seen, I've been so grateful, grateful for her, her presence on the stage as first a musician. And then when, uh, let's see. I had to get my script. Uh, first, uh, first was uh, JC Superstar, which I conducted after South Pacific, which was, I forget the year, 88, thank you. Uh, and she was up there on the stage. You might have seen some uh, DVD, CD clips on YouTube. I fit a group of clips from uh, uh, way back, uh, at least uh, J.C. Superstar. I think that was the very first album, yeah. And uh, saw all her energy as a singer and a dancer. <clears throat> and after that, uh, let's see, what was, after that, I, I saw her and I was still reviewing. And I saw her in, if I can pronounce this, Les Dizagons. Les Dizagons, Dangerous. Dangerous Liaison. Dangerous Liaison. Okay, thank you. My first goes back to my high school, which was 1954. So, never mind. Okay, and then after that, uh, in uh, 19. Somewhere, 92, I was connect, or 91, I was conducting uh, Romance Romance. And I was working for Village Press. And so uh, Village Press had a trade show. So I had to leave for that final weekend. So Sam was playing in my orchestra. So I asked her to step up and conduct the, the last weekend. It was dynamite. And the very next summer, I think, she conducted a summer show, hot as hell. And that was a funny thing happened on the way to form. And if you remember that, <laughs> Jeremy Evans was the director, I believe. <coughs> no, who is it? It was HD. Jeremy. Jeremy. Oh, 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 oh okay. There he is. Oh, excellent. Okay, it was a really good show, but it was really sweating and stuff. Anyway, uh, finally, uh, any anyway, that was her first full conducting opportunity, which was really a great show, in spite of the heat. And. Uh, count the number of, of shows that I've conducted that Sam has played in my orchestra. It's easily 15, 16, maybe 20. And I had, I tried to count up all the, the shows that Sam had conducted, and I lost count. Some of them because her name wasn't on uh, Don Kilburn's uh, list. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't matter. Sam's an incredible friend, a wonderful musician, and as we say in Chicago, I love you, honey. I love you.
true Hall of Famer because he called me this morning and he had paraphrased uh, Thomas Jefferson's song from uh, Hamilton. <laughs> I thought I should sing it for you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to do it. But oh my gosh, what a, what a life. It's been, it'll be 40 years next season that I've been involved, and um, Joe said so much of what I was going to say, and Phil, thank you guys so much. Um, I just, I, the people here have just been amazing, of course. Um, my, the first show I saw here was in 1983, and it was Hair, and I was so blown away by the actors, the tech, the production itself, that I thought, that this is just professional. I mean, I was just, I wanted to come to every show that there was. I never dreamed that I would be on the stage or in the pit, let alone for 39 years and counting. So it's, it's just been a ride. And um, I've, the people here have been just amazing and all the creativity that goes on and the, the best friends that I've, I've made through the years. You, I mean, look at yourselves, you're just wonderful. And the fresh young people that we've got coming in and the work that the Artistic Committee has done and the board, um, just thank you guys so much. Uh, what else did I have in my notes? Joe said a lot of it, but um, actually the first show that I, oh, he told you about South Pacific, which was our first show. But um, the first show that I was music director for, um, a guy named Steve Clark was directing Bye Bye Birdie in 1990. So he actually uh, enticed, convinced me to be the music director for that show. And that was my first music direction in 1990. And I've done 22. Um, <laughs> excited for next season. It's, it's a great season. Carol at Christmas Dinner is going to be wonderful and to work with you guys. Oh my gosh, it's going to be an honor. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, um, I have not counted. I can't count. Jeff counted for himself. <laughs> How many shows he played. So I, I'm not even going to come close to counting because I know it's been a ton of shows because every, sh every musical Almost every musical I wasn't conducting, I was also play, I was playing in the pit. And as you guys said, I've been on stage, I've actually stage managed. Um, I did run sound peg. I did run sound. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. And um, what else did I do? That's, that's really about it. But uh, I've been around. And I never, ever, ever, when I, when I was told about this, I never imagined that I receiving any award here because I never worked hard over any one period ever, but I just hung around. So, <laughs> this is what you got Thank you. 
office will set you up with your all-season pass, but you are the first to receive our brand new hot off the press brochures for the upcoming season. <laughs> We have come up with a way that if you would like to um, do your membership for the next season, uh, Jim has a form set up. You can take care of that tonight and really kick us off strong for the new season. Uh, Jenna has a uh, ideas, comments, suggestion box downstairs. Uh, I think it's mixed in on the snack table. Uh, help yourself to any of that. And there's a table of some free, uh, free things down there, so please. Uh, go back downstairs to Schmuckle Theater and enjoy your friends here from the Playhouse and congratulate our award winners. Thank you.